demonstrating how anemic the blower fan is in my 1976 C3 Corvette. So I've seen where fellow Corvette enthusiasts have upgraded the C3 blower fan to a C4 blower fan. Uh, however, an, an adapter is required to be fabricated for that. So I purchased this blower from Rock Auto. Um, I believe it's about three quarters of an inch longer than the C3 squirrel cage, so that's why the adapter would be needed. Um, it's uh, it was about 30 bucks. It's a Four Seasons brand. At AC Delco for 70 bucks, but it said it won't ship in an AC Delco box, so I figure it's probably the same Chinese manufacturer that makes both. So the blower fan is located on the passenger side underneath the fender, way back under here. So the first thing we have to do is take out the reservoir for the cooling system. Uh, there are actually three bolts up underneath the fender, three eighths inch bolts that you can easily take out without having to remove your tire. And uh, then there's a solenoid here with connector for the AC you pull out of the way. My AC condenser is current, or my compressor is currently not on the car, so it may make it a little easier for me to get this out than it would for those of you who just installed. But basically, the, you can see the reservoir is loose now and that should spill, wiggle a little, and should pop. So now you can get a little bit of a better idea of how the motor looks uh, with the reservoir out of the way. Um, so you can see here, first of all, is a ground plug that I've pulled off, single pole. There's also the, the power connector down towards the bottom there. If I can get my hand down there, we'll that, show you there where that is, that's single pole too. There's this line, which is a, just a tube. I believe it's a fresh air tube that hooks straight into the motor case and it's just press fitting. And then this is also an arrestor. I believe it's just to keep the noise down on your, your radio made by the blower fan. It's held by, it looks like, five quarter inch bolts. So we'll go ahead and loosen those. I've got all five screws out um, of the motor housing. I do recommend uh, taking the most difficult to reach or see screws out first. That way, when it comes to taking uh, the, the motor out, you're not trying to finagle around back there. But anyway, to get the motor out, um, it looks like you can just kind of flip it around here, upside down, spin it, and out it comes. So here's a comparison of the two motors, um, old motor, new motor from the C4. Uh, the new motor is actually seven eighths of an inch longer than the C3 motor, uh, the squirrel cage for it. So the adapter will have to be uh, made to fit that. And I also bought some extra gasket maker material, 16th of an inch thick. I'll put it on each side of the adapter to get our seven eighths clearance that we need. Um, the motors don't look 100% identical on the back side, but the bolt holes will line up. Um, I did go ahead and put a little mark on the top of the old motor just to keep in mind exactly where it is when I go to put the new one back. Um, see, it's got the same single pull connector. It's got the plug here that will pull out for the, the fresh air line that will plug into there, which falls in the same relative spot. So that's all looking good. Um, as far as for the adapter uh, i purchased a piece of three quarter inch uh, by eight inch by 12 inch hdpe plastic uh, sheet on ebay i think it was about 20 bucks for that um, and it's supposed to be good material for for making this adapter it's it's fuel oil resistant and temperature resistant uh, i also downloaded a a template for the the uh, adapter uh, and i'll put a link to that online uh, I'll post it with my video. Uh, one thing I'm not real happy about is just how thin this is on these two sections. I think I'll, I'll make mine a little thicker. There's plenty of clearance down there uh, to make it thicker. It's just less, less chance of breaking it when I'm cutting it. So if I do need to shave it, I can some, but uh, said I don't think that'll be necessary. I'd rather have a little more strength involved with it. Um, I also purchased then five new screws. Uh, the the old screws that were holding over half inch, so the new one is half inch and a half, so they're number eight screws, just regular sheet metal screws. Um, also, this is a good point to, or a good time to clean up your, your ground connector too that was on there. I just went ahead and wire brushed this one up just so it's nice and, and clean. We'll be sure you have a good ground. Uh, another good opportunity to clean out where your old blower motor was. Uh, just make sure there's no refuse in there, mouse nests or anything else. Mine look pretty clean, so uh, that's it for this step. So I use this small scribe to 
mark the template onto the HDPE plastic, uh, and then use my jigsaw with this multi-purpose blade to, uh, to cut out the, the uh, adapter. Um, it cut pretty easy, actually. Um, it certainly leaves a lot to, uh, of, of refuse from the plastic as you cut it. So you have to be sure and keep clearing the, uh, the uh, plastic out of the way so you can see your marks. Um, I recommend using a drill to cut the, uh, uh, to make a hole to start your jigsaw, cut the center out first. The most important thing is the center does need to be uh, five and nine sixteenths across. Uh, so that's what you want for your diameter for your circle to be sure you clear the, the squirrel cage. So I've used a couple of seat clamps to clamp the adapter to the, the motor flange and just want to check to make sure that we've got good clearance all the way around the squirrel cage with the adapter and looks like we're in pretty good shape there. It looks pretty even. Um, I went ahead and marked the top of the uh, adapter and the top of the motor um, just so if I have to take things apart inside the fender I can put back where everything needs to go properly. Um, see also on the back side here then we want to check to make sure that we've got good clearance all around for for each of our bolt holes which i marked with a, a little scribe just to make sure i hit those and then i also use the scribe to mark the 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 hole where we'll need to drill the five holes for the uh, the screws to fit um, if you have a drill press it'd be ideal to use that uh, for drilling the holes to make sure they're good and square I don't have a drill press, so I took an extra piece of the that was left over from the plastic and went ahead and used a guide to to drill um, a, a, a nine degree hole. Just used um, you know just a, a nine degree angle up against it, just to make sure it's looking good. And I will use this as as a jig on top of the pieces the the uh, the holes where I drill those in the adapter to make sure they're good and square. Also note, before taking the adapter off of the flange, go ahead and use your drill, which I used an 11 64th inch bit uh, to drill little pilot holes in your, your five holes that will be used to, to mount the adapter in the motor. Um, I also went ahead and just cleaned up the uh, adapter a little bit with some sandpaper just to take off just any, any loose debris on that, so just to be sure you have a, a good clean surface. So I drilled all the holes in the adapter, uh, seemed to go well. Um, also note I did put some marker on the, on the side of the gasket that, or on the side of the adapter that will be visible uh, when I put it in once again, make it easier to line things up, but uh, pre-fit all the, the screws and they seem to be good. I'll go ahead and pre-fit it in the car, just the adapter, just to make sure that, that everything lines up in there uh, before I take it to the next phase. So I went ahead and put the screws in the adapter and test fit it in the car just to make sure that everything lined up and it all looks good. Um, so the next step will be to cut out these two gaskets out of fiberglass gasket material. So just take a ballpoint pen, trace around it. Also put a little mark on the gasket. So once again, if you have to take things apart again or whatever, you get, the, get it lined up properly. Um, I also went ahead and used my uh, drill to drill the, the holes for this as well too. It just drills right through the, the fiberglass fine. So uh, next up will be cut these out with scissors, make one for the, the other side, and then on to the next step. I finished cutting out the fiberglass gasket um, and uh, both pieces and have married it up here to the, uh, the motor and the flange. Um, be sure you line it up correctly with your marks. Um, because if you cut the if you cut the holes correctly on this, they will all be identical, and the, this uh, adapter will fit up in in any particular position. So you want to be sure you get it right. Um, also note this particular screw hole here is the one that will house the the ground terminal, and uh, you don't have to do this. Probably some guys may call me out for it, but I go ahead and scrape the paint off uh, behind where the ground terminal is going to sit. Uh, just to be sure there's a good electrical connection there. I was able to get the motor and squirrel cage in fine. I just had to put the motor in first and then just twist it around to get it in there. Uh, don't forget to put on your ground terminal 
on the bolt near the top there. The other bolt closer to the very top uh, will also get the arrestor remounted on that. So we'll go ahead and finish uh, snugging it up and put the electrical connections on and see what happens. So I ran into a bit of a detour uh, after I got the the motor snugged up. Um, I went to put this cooling tube back on, which is used to cool the motor. And I was having a heck of a time getting it on, and I think I discovered why. And that's because the old motor has a 7 8 inch opening, and the new motor has a 3 quarter inch opening. So it's an eighth of an inch less room to, to work with here. So I'm going to work with this and uh, post that for our next step. After discovering the cooling tube for the motor has a different size than what the replacement motor had, I also discovered this tube is cracked, which after 48 years, I guess, isn't surprising. I don't see where you can order replacement anywhere either. Um, you know, just searching for the, the part number and the part specifically. So I don't know if anybody out there is aware of any place you can get one, but um, so I decided to make a mod to it anyway. So uh, also it's a good thing that I pulled this tube off down at the, the base because I discovered the nozzle that was feeding it uh, had a couple of maple seedling propellers stuck in there, which was blocking uh, some of the airflow to the old motor. So obviously the old motor didn't burn up, but I'm sure it didn't do any good running hot. Uh, so anyway, what I did was I already had a half inch male adapter copper that required just a little bit of sanding and it fit into the opening in the motor already. Um, I had to tap it in with a hammer um, and you can see there's still plenty of room. I didn't tap it all the way in, but um, there's still plenty of room before the, it hits the, the, uh, the motor parts in there. So. Um, I also then uh, scraped the paint around that opening just to make a clear surface and used some J a JB Weld steel stick that I already had sitting around. Just grabbed a little piece of it and rolled it out and packed it in around there. And I think that takes about an hour to set up. It feels like it's already set up pretty good just after 10 minutes. But we'll let it sit for an hour before we go and attempt to reinstall the motor. Um, I also then grabbed a piece of radiator hose I had, which was, uh, it's three quarter inch uh, inside diameter on that. So that will fit snugly on this fitting and the outlet, although it's certainly overkill compared to the old hose. Uh, so anyway, on to the next step. So when you're remounting the motor, um, be sure that you try to hand tighten the screws um, as evenly as possible, um, or if you can't get them to hand tighten using a wrench, just be sure to make laps around um, and maybe go you know one full turn of the screw each time, just so you evenly bring the uh, the, the motor flange up into place uh, and don't put undue pressure on one side or the other. Um, and also be sure and don't over tighten these things because they're just screws going into I believe fiberglass, so. Uh, there's not real strong threads back there, so you know don't tear your threads up. Now the screws are tightened on the motor flange, uh, so we got the arrestor back at the top, the ground wire on the next bolt to the right. Um, underneath here, we've got the purple main power hook back up on the terminal. Also had to improvise on the um, the cooling tube. Uh, the Radiator hose I was going to use uh, ended up just being too thick and wouldn't bend, so I ended up using some some uh, clear fuel line. Uh, I believe it's 5.8, so it had to stretch a little bit on both of the uh, the nipples there, but um, looks like it should do the job. Now we'll see to test if the new motor has more power. Definitely does. I can feel it blowing back on my face now, whereas before I could. Now the only remaining steps are going to be to put the reservoir back into place under the fender, um, reattach this solenoid up here for the AC, um, put a little more antifreeze in the, uh, in the reservoir to bring it up to cold status, and I believe that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Good luck with your build.